zone restriction ahead. Make sure you have the required permit to proceed. What? Environmental what? zone restriction ahead. Make sure you have the required permit to proceed. I'm Mike. And I'm Danny. And this sure is Petrol Revolt. Welcome back to another Petrol Revolt video and today we're at Suzuki Live's event at Cadwell Park. Now this is a track day exclusively for Suzuki's. They've got uh, classics and modern day bikes here. You know, in the background there you can see the Sheen collection, uh, all the team classic RG500s which Danny is going to be riding later. Yeah, um, they have told me that they sent me an email saying that I was going to be riding Sheen 76 bike in the parade, um, but I obviously haven't read the email, uh, so that was a surprise when I turned up this morning and I can't wait to have a go on it. It's just, I'm so privileged to do it. I never thought in my whole career that I'd ever get to ride Sheen 76 bike, so I can't wait for that and uh, can't wait to get out on track with Mike as well. Well, hopefully you don't break it and that frees up Sheen's old mechanics to have an interview with Mark and talk about the good old days. Yeah, I'll be interviewing Paul and Martin um, on the days when she used to race that bike and they used to maintain it and go from circuit to circuit around Europe and the world. So today we've been invited up to Cadwell Park by Suzuki to take part in their Suzuki Live Track Day. They've also given me the opportunity to ride Barry Sheen's 76 Championship winning bike. Um, for me, this is an incredible opportunity to ride this. Barry's a hero of mine, so um, I'm a little bit nervous in doing it. I'm very much looking forward to today. So we're lucky enough to have Tim here from Suzuki GB. Um, Tim, first of all, thanks for inviting us. And um, what is today all about? Well, today is all really about the brand experience of Suzuki. Um, we're obviously very, know, very well known for doing our classic uh, uh, program uh, with the vintage parts program. Um, but also we've integrated some of the modern bikes in today. So it's all about, you know, people being on track, enjoying themselves. We've got the lovely sunshine out at Cadwell. Uh, people just, you know, looking at the bikes. We're doing a parade at lunchtime um, on the Sheen bikes. So we've got four of Barry's uh, original bikes here, uh, of which you're going to be uh, riding one of them. So I hope you're not too nervous. Um, but yeah, so we've got a few other people riding them, uh, you know, and they're putting an event on for the customers. They can also take a, a, one of your road bikes out on the road as well, can't they, to test ride them as well? Yeah, we've got the test ride fleet here. So you could take a, a Vista 1050 out, you could take the new uh, GSX S1000 GT out. We've got the high booster there as well and the, the naked bikes. So yeah, we've got a, a full fleet of bikes here for customers to try. Cool, brilliant. And the next question is, are you riding today? I'm not riding today, but there is a reason. Uh, I go on holiday tomorrow um, and I just didn't want to push it, push my luck. So uh, I'm going on a, a biking holiday for enough where I'm actually using a high booster as my touring bike. Oh, are you? That's good. Well, as you know, we've done a, a bit of a review on the high booster and I think it's an amazing bike my mind just transformed because I thought it was just a straight line bike and they weren't very comfortable and 
but when when I rode it, I was pleasantly surprised. Like I was the way it handled. It doesn't feel that heavy when you're riding it. It's a, it's a perfect bike for touring on, really, isn't it? Jeez, I mean, I'm, I'm quite tall, but even so, it's still just about comfortable, you know, for the six foot plus people, uh, which was I was pleased about because I'm going to be doing probably about a thousand miles on it next week. <laughs> So I've got another uh, couple of questions for you. One of them is, who is your all-time Suzuki hero? Yeah. A couple, really. Um, the obvious one is Barry Sheen. Um, but obviously, with, with the work that I've done with the family and the bikes, um, growing up, he was, you know, he was your man. Uh, then after that, I, I, I loved Randy Mamola. I thought he was fantastic, brilliant rider. Um, but then there's obviously Swans. You know, he was, uh, what he could do on a motorcycle was just incredible. Uh, in an era where the RGV 500s were really tough to ride, you know, with the big band engines and whatnot. And uh, he, he made it look, well, I won't say made it look easy, but he was, he was brilliant. So yeah, they're, they're probably my, I can't really pick one, but those are my three favourite ones. If you see some of the clips from Swanson that, you know, just the blue smoke coming off the tyres and his, his unique riding style, and the way he used to break on that bike was just phenomenal, wasn't it? He was, and I think he was always, a lot of people in that area, he, even though Doohan was quick then, Rainey was quick then, I mean, Rainey was quite superior then, um, but Swans with his unique style and the way he used to ride and, and the way he used to get the most out of that motorbike. Incredible. He, he was a lot of people's hero, wasn't he? Yeah, it was. And the, I mean, the first year that I really sort of took notice of Swans was 89 on the Pepsi bike when really he should have won the World Championship. I mean, he, he either finished on the podium or crashed or had a DNF for, for, for the technical whatever. So, you know, he, he should have won this, that, that year. That was the year that he should have won and, and it, he didn't. I think he finished third in the end. Um, but yeah, so it, it was just, a, I think what you were saying about it, it hasn't been said already, you know, it was just brilliant. And the last question is, what's the most iconic Suzuki bike for you? Difficult. I mean, I, my probably one of my all-time favourites um, is a bike that I think you you've had a little pooch on as well. Is it's our Katana, the Team Classic Suzuki uh, Endurance Katana. Absolutely love that bike. It's a bike that I was very much involved with the idea, the concept of you know from start to finish. Uh, it means a lot to me. So that's probably my for me just because of what it what I've been I've been involved with it. For, you know, is my favourite. I think. Um, there are many others. I mean, I love the bit, the RB King. Um, that is a phenomenal bike. We're very lucky at Suzuki to have so many bikes to choose from. But I think if I, I had to choose, my favourite is probably the TCS Katana. I love the B King. Um, I like the size of it. It's just huge. It's the high booster engine. Um, you know, the big 1340 engine as well. Um, so they're probably that's probably my two. So I know when I rode for you guys a couple of years ago at the Spa Classic, you rode down to Spa on a 250, a Suzuki 250, didn't you? How was that journey? Good. Uh, it was. It was. It was a bit hard, but you know, I'm over six foot and a little RGV 250 is probably not the, the best bike to do nearly 200 miles on. Um, but we did it, and I have to say, it was absolutely brilliant. Um, I really enjoyed it. It had all my luggage on it as well. Uh, we were blessed with the weather, it was scorching hot, um, and it was great, you know, the roads, especially as we, we got nearer to Spa, the roads we got really good with some nice twisties on it, so we, we were all on classic bikes, so we had the Slabby 750, we had a, um, a GSXI 1100L as well, uh, we, so we were in tandem, and we had a real good, good, good crack, it was a brilliant, brilliant uh, uh, trip, I must admit. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you for joining us here at Petrol Revolt and also thank you for letting us come on the Suzuki Live Day. No, yeah, brilliant and good luck. Thank you. I think it's time to go and have some fun though. Absolutely, yeah. Good luck. <laughs>
Remember, it's right hand gear shift on this. I'll tell you what, I never ever ever expected to ride Barrachine 76 championship winning bike. This is an absolute honour. to be riding this bike I can't I can't believe Suzuki giving me this opportunity to see we reviewed it in the petrol revolt workshop but oh my god temperatures creeping up a bit Got a bit of poke, I'll tell you that. From 76 side. Right hand gear shift as well, I never rode from the right hand gear shift. But at least it's um it's a race box, so. You know what, I'm so nervous to be riding this bike. It's just such, it's a piece, such a massive piece of history. It's getting a race for you. The gear lever's real low on it. End of the back straight. It's a nice, I'll tell you what though, it's nice. It is nice to ride. I wouldn't want to ride it any faster than this, I'd be too nervous. Beautiful sunny day at Cabwell Park. Riding this bike around. And I wouldn't want to ride it around any faster. Just, you know, my all-time hero. Won a world championship on this bike. I'm blown away. I've said it before, you know, Suzuki. Classic Suzuki have given me so many of my... So many of my career highlights just by giving me bikes like this to ride. Speechless, absolute speechless. <laughs> Just amazing, what an amazing experience. Through the woodland section.
Welcome to a sunny Lincolnshire at Fantastic Cabwell Park. We're at Suzuki Live event with Paul Bolton and Martin Nogborn for Suzuki GB X Race Mechanics. You must have some real good stories to tell. Let's face it, Barry, legend, Barry's bike. What was Barry like as a racer? He was determined to do it his way. And even when we tried to explain common sense, he just would have a way of disregarding it. He wanted it only his way, which if you start saying no, that's not, and you keep knocking him down, they lose the will to, they just go, you don't like me, you don't trust me. So in the end, we gave in politely, but there was things he was doing wrong, like as he, when the bikes came from Japan, the calipers were on the rear, because he just turned the fork back. Yeah, it's one thing that me and Danny picked up in the first video, that the calipers, when we saw them, the calipers were on the wrong side of the forks. Yeah. What was Barry's reasoning behind Barry, that? Barry, when they came from Japan, he did at the, in Ruyo at the circuit. He tried it with no rear. So I don't like it. It doesn't feel right steering. So he turned them. We, we didn't turn them around. We have to. We have to swap fork legs and put them. That takes about two hours. He went out. I like it, but we said, yeah, but you're now going to get brake failure because you've covered up the disc. It's the disc giving the heat to the caliper, and you've got to keep the disc cool, not the caliper. The caliper doesn't matter. It's just behind the leg. But he, he just said, no, I want it that way. So, okay. Um, and we did have brake trouble at a few circuits. But like all these things, the defining point at the end of the day, it's the racer that makes the decision. He has to feel comfortable on that bike. And as we all know, if the racer's not happy with his bike, he won't perform at his best ability all the time. Now you two keep these bikes going around the circuits, around the country with Suzuki events. What do you have to keep maintained on them from meeting to meeting? compared to what you used to have to do when the bikes were racing? The same. The same stuff, really. Same, same stuff. stuff. It's the same yeah. stuff, it yeah. is. So in terms of engine longevity, etc., clutch plates, things like that, how often do they change, you know, when they're here coming around and prayed in, obviously the clutches don't get a hard time, but when they launch in the races, do you change them after every race, couple of races, a whole meeting? You check them after every race, and if they coned, then you change okay. them. It'd be regularly changing things like piston rings. You put new ones in for every race, for example, every every weekend race. Yeah. Um, pistons, three or four Grand Prix, crankshafts, five or six Grand Prix, gearboxes out every session to make sure they're okay, no problems with those. In the later V4s, we were changing silencers for every race, worth right. four horsepower, apparently. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of those ex um, RGV 500 silencers always floating around on eBay that people seem to be selling. <laughs> yeah. The ultra rare ones. Yeah. Um, Reliability-wise, were these engines reliable or were they prone to certain things failing on them? Yes. They were quite reliable, really. I suppose disc valve was maybe a weak point, but um, otherwise, if you kept on top of the maintenance, they were, they were good. When good the... engineering. And one of the testaments is that 40 years on, we're able to keep them going fairly easily yeah. with routine maintenance. Exactly. So the design must have been about there in the first place. And they have obviously different riders every single meeting, yeah. riding the bikes differently, etc. Do any of the riders pick up certain things about the bikes when they ride them that they might find different to a modern day race bike? Because obviously you've got, you know, modern day racers riding 40 year old bikes. I mean, they must be a bit wallowy, etc. compared to modern day. I, th I think a lot of them have this illusion that it's going to be no power, no power, everything and they're not really that bad. They're actually quite tractable from low down if you don't give them lots of throttle. Right. So I think that surprises them and, and just how smooth the engine delivery is. Yeah, in terms of that, when you were racing with Barry, going from circuit to circuit, apart from obvious gearing changes, was there anything else which changed on the bike from circuit to circuit to make it more drivable, etc.? Because suspension wise, there's not a lot to change on them. Um, was there anything else moved or changed but they used to introduce things like the we haven't got them on these bikes the, people called them golden shocks they were air suspension because that's when he, they were making that because Kayaba wanted to go into production for giving all the help and it did go into a gs thousand came with it but we had to perfect it and it was quite a novelty barry didn't particularly like it because it meant a lot of stopping and starting but he did win the World Championship on them. They're not on any of these parts. We've got the normal springs on them. But the way it works in Japan, the people that are doing the development don't do it for the fun of it. They charge you, well, not us, but the factory. Then they want something back. Like, we want to have our suspension on your production bikes. Then it's suddenly 50,000 
units because they can't just go, we'll do prototype, we'll do prototype, then Kyabra goes bust. And so they had to get a payback. And sometimes the factory would sometimes give us stuff that wasn't really ready, but they were being pressurised by the Nippon Denso, right. the spark plug or NGK, or in the words, Kyabra was fantastic, but too slow. It's a massive company in Japan. They make things from rotary cement mixers, they do suspension for aircraft, and so motorbikes a little bit. Yeah. But you get no advertising if you say, Boeing Jumbo Jet 747 with Kyle suspension, forget it. Nobody knows who builds what for what. But the motorcycles, they were using it for, for you know, Japan Incorporate. Yeah, with the air suspension, did they have a problem with damping, changing with temperature? No. no nothing at no, all? We, we ran nitrogen gas. Right, OK. And that kept quite constant throughout yeah, the race. Yeah, stays the same. Right, OK. But it was much more forgiving. Yes. Springs are really weird. And we tried, we, we asked them to, do, to use titanium springs. They, there's nobody else in England. So a guy made them in England because they have to pickle them in acids. You can't grind it. You slim the spring down, if, and the, but they weigh nothing. And I brought a set back and they'd never, I mean, Carver said, we're at it. We cannot do that. They'd never seen titanium, first of all, sprung wound. And then to get the damping different, pickle it in acid to eat away. Right. So they, it was beyond them. And sometimes I knew it. Yeah, well, talking of money, budget-wise, back in the 70s, what was, say, like the budget, roughly, for a race season? It's, it's hard, because Japan had never disclosed right. their engineering bu budget. But I would guess they would always cost things in dollars, because sometimes I used to check things off, and I couldn't believe. Like, radiators, they were almost handmade. They were like $50,000, US right. dollars each wow and we'd go through 20 because buff it take them off some of the costs are mind-blowing in japan i got no idea why but i would think suzuki's budget was maybe for a season 20 million or wow. maybe somewhere around there honda we're doing 50. do you reckon that would have increased in the 80s when you were in um when i started with the uk team probably not it was a bit lower than that right but i mean they were still spending serious money, yeah. Yeah. Um, when we got to Pepsi with the V4s, we were spending serious money again. But, you know, that was coming from Pepsi. And Suzuki working really hard to develop the V4. So there's a lot of money going into it at that point. Right. They'd come back from a few years away from racing. And they had a point to prove. Yes. And then we hired the right rider and <laughs> got the results. So what were the main riders you supported? Uh, in 82, 83, Keith Hewan, Rob McKelney, on to Mick Grant, uh, Paul Lewis in 86 with the carbon fibre bikes, 87, Paul Idden, Christian Idden's dad. Yeah. Um, in fact, I was showing a picture of Christian as a baby to him earlier in the paddock here. Oh, right. That was taken in 1987. So it sort of dates me a little bit. <laughs> and then in 88, Rob Mack and Kevin at Pepsi Suzuki with the V4s again. So, yeah. But in between, because I work for the team, you're off this weekend, you're going to go and work for Randy, or you're going to go and work for Barry, or come and help the factory team do this bit, or do something else. Yeah. So you were a hired hand, and you went where you were told to go. Right, OK. And obviously, Barry is the icon of Suzuki RG500s. Was he the party animal that everybody thinks he was? Was he as flamboyant as everybody thinks he was? Yeah. No, he was in bed by nine. <laughs> no, he, he... On his own. Yeah. <laughs> He, he'd, uh, he'd never stay in the paddock because it was too, too, it was too much. Th those days gone when he had a caravan, he stayed, that was for uh, Iris and Franco and yeah. Betty Don. He would go back to the hotel. Austria would use the uh, Valtin Hotel, I think, yeah, the one up, up on the top where Thatcher and Reagan had meetings. Um, and he would often, that would be paid for by the organiser because they were earning more money by appearance than they were from. The, the money for winning a Grand Prix was pitiful. It's yeah, like three hundred no francs. No. Sticking on Barry. Barry's greatest race. Your opinions? Any thoughts? The fastest lap at Spa. Fastest lap at Spa. One hundred thirty-seven, whatever it was, average speed round Spa. Because that takes that, ball. That was a good race. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that, and that's the record that stands. Yeah, I was about to say that record still stands now, yeah. doesn't it? I mean, the circuit's changed, so nobody's yeah. going to break it. No. But it still stands. Yeah. Fastest lap no. ever for a Grand Prix oh, circuit. And that's yeah. any vehicle. Yeah. 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 Average 137 with two dead stops. Amazing. He did have one trait that used to annoy us. He, he had more fans in France because he built it up. He could speak fluent French, same in Italy. Same in Spain, he had a gift. One of the things he used to cheese us off, at the end of the race, he would just say, 
people would allow, once the race is over, everybody pile into the paddock, you know, because we're packing up. He'd sit on the back of the tailgate for four hours. We couldn't load while he had 20,000 people sign off. And that's the way he like milked the audience. We'd be saying, get off, we got to load up. No. And they were just, with this, oh, we just go and have a cup of tea. Well, that's what made Barry Barry though, wasn't it? Yeah. Public loved it. Public, public they got loved it. He was a real people person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody seemed to love Barry. And even now, the young racers, I want to be like Barry Sheen. I mean, you know, Barry hasn't been around for a long, long time now, but they all know Barry. It's because he cultivated yeah. his fan club. Yeah, exactly. It was massive and he never forget them. Without them, you ain't got a job. Well, the legend lives on at the end of the day. Yeah. And as we say, you guys, you keep the legends living every weekend, taking these lovely, gorgeous bikes all around the country and keeping them going. So for that, we must all thank you very much. Um, it's been great speaking to you. Thank you, Paul. And you, yeah, it's a pleasure to work in. Yeah. It's a pleasure to work on the bikes. It must be. So, yeah, yeah we're quite privileged. We'll be at home knitting. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, we're at the end of a really long day, but how enjoyable has it been? Blue skies, Cadwell Park. I was in the slow group. There was about seven people in it, so I had the whole track to myself. And how cool was it to see the Sheen bike in the parade lap. You enjoyed that, Danny? Oh, it is amazing. You know, I never thought that I'd ever get the chance to, to ride a Sheen 76 Championship winning bike. It's just an absolute honour to do that. And I want to thank Suzuki for letting me do that. It's, uh, it's amazing. I've had a fantastic day. We've all caught the sun. Um, I see Mike nearly overshoot the gooseneck, um, but he didn't quite. But uh, no, it was, a, it was a brilliant day, you know, just riding bikes especially these classic iconic bikes it's been it's been a fantastic day and and once again thanks for suzuki for putting the event on one question that we wanted to answer from our review of the sheen bike back on episode one was why the front calipers were before the forks on sheen's race bikes uh with chatting with sheen's mechanics did you understand why that was i did and it seems to be no matter what physics it takes the rider has the final say, even if it's wrong. If he's happy, he's going to race it. So he didn't change it due to superstition. It worked in that one place to start with, so he just left it there? Exactly. And that's the way he liked it. That's the way he wanted it. No matter what they said, wouldn't change his mind. And there's me thinking that there's some sort of airflow, some sort of technical reason. It just, no, it worked there once. It Let's leave it there. Says. Well, thanks once again to Suzuki for inviting us to Suzuki Live at Cadwell Park. And we'll see you on our next track day, which should be one of ours. It's Barcelona Park Motor in July in Spain. We're looking forward to that one, Danny. Yeah, and also, you know, visit the website to find out more about the track days and obviously this cool merchandising. You know, we've got some, we've got some pretty cool stuff. So um, check us out, send us a message, find out more about our track days, and we look forward to seeing you soon.